Borglum's death and World War Roman II ended the project prematurely. Several changes to the design were made during construction. Unexpected bumps in the road led to some changes in Borglum's original plans. Thomas Jefferson was meant to be on the left of Washington, but he had to be moved when the stone in that area was found to be ill-suited for carving. This change meant a space that originally going to be carved into a small building had to be used for Lincoln's head. The building was never completed. Roosevelt's head ended up sunken further back into the mountain than intended, as workers had to dig deeper than expected to find workable stone. Blacksmiths were on call all day. In addition to workers who actually chiseled into Mount Rushmore, blacksmiths were integral to the project's completion. Blacksmiths were constantly on site, working to repair and sharpen tools as needed. Some blacksmiths sharpened almost 400 drills a day. Despite the dangerous nature of the work, no lives were lost during construction. The construction of Mount Rushmore was actually pretty dangerous. Workers had to use dynamite to blast away over 450,000 tons of rock to get to the workable surface below. In addition to handling dynamite, workers were lowered from the top of the mountain in sling-like harnesses called bosun chairs to carve. Despite the dangerous nature of the work, no lives were lost during the carving of Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore was never completed. If you've noticed Lincoln's missing an ear, the presidents were meant to be depicted from the waist up. There was also supposed to be carvings of the Louisiana Purchase and the Declaration of Independence, in addition to a secret room behind Lincoln's head. Construction ended in 1941 after Borglum's death, and the projected was never completed. The construction of Mount Rushmore was met with controversy. Mount Rushmore was actually a highly controversial project from the get-go. Environmentalists of the time were deeply opposed to carving into the Black Hills, believing this would destroy the area's natural beauty. The Lakota tribe saw Mount Rushmore as their homeland, and were deeply opposed to it being desecrated. For the Lakota, the carving of four white men into the mountain was a reminder of their oppression. In the 1930s, Lakota chief Henry Standing Bear commissioned a sculptor to carve a statue of the legendary Lakota leader Crazy Horse on a cliff 15 miles from Mount Rushmore. The project is ongoing today and is privately funded, as advocates of the memorial refuse government grants. When done, the sculpture will be vastly bigger than Mount Rushmore itself. The original plan for Mount Rushmore was entirely different than what we see today. Workers earned modest wages, despite the grueling nature of the work. Mount Rushmore's sculptor was involved with a highly controversial project of learning affairs. Mount Rushmore's sculptor was involved with a highly controversial project honoring the Confederacy. 90% of the carving was done with dynamite. Each president represented a specific aspect of American history. Sculptor Gutsan Borglum chose presidents he believed would reflect the spirit of America. Wanting the sculpture to represent the full scope of American identity, he selected the four presidents he felt most thoroughly represented the country. Washington was chosen as he represented the founding of the nation. Jefferson was selected for his part expanding the country with the Louisiana Purchase. 
Lincoln was honored for keeping the country together throughout the Civil War, and Roosevelt was depicted for his part in making America a world power. Mount Rushmore's sculptor harbored white supremacist views. While Gutson Borglum had no formal ties to the Confederacy, he had some white supremacist beliefs that fit in with ideals of the Civil War era South. He wrote of his fear of racial impurity in personal letters, worrying about a mongrel board destroying the Nordic purity of the American West. While it is unclear if Borglum was actually a member of the Ku Klux Klan, he worked closely with Klan members when working on the Stone Mountain carvings memorializing the Confederacy and seemed sympathetic to their politics. Hey guys, thank you so much for the support and like and comment down below and also thank you so much for watching and I look forward to see you in the next video then. Take care. Bye.